Hello, everyone. I hope you're well. My name is Gianni Cook, and I'm an admission counselor here at Loyola University of Chicago. First, I just want to say thank you for tuning in to this presentation with me. In this presentation, I'm going to be going through the Loyola 101, talking about some different resources available to you all, and some experiences you can have being a Loyola student. Before we do that, though, I do want to give a little background into who I am. Again, my name is Gianni. I'm an admission counselor for Loyola, but I'm actually graduated from Loyola. I'm an alum. Uh, I have a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science from the university, and I was pretty active on campus as a student. I became a brother of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated at Loyola. I was active in our Student Diversity and Multicultural Affairs Office as a mentor for a couple of years, and I was active in different cultural organizations as well as different social justice and service themed student organizations. Talking about social justice and service really leads us into the first conversation we're going to have on this presentation, and that's talking about the Jesuit tradition. So some of you may be familiar with Jesuits, some of you may not be familiar with Jesuits. Jesuits are actually the largest order of Catholic priests, and they come from the teachings of St. Ignatius of Loyola. He's the statue that's pictured right there. St. Ignatius was really looking to found an order that's giving people well rounded education that inspired compassion through service and social justice. So how do we fit into that picture at Loyola? Well, we actually have the largest undergraduate population of all the Jesuit schools in the country, so we're the biggest, and we want to give our students a well-rounded education that is taught through the lens of how can you help other people with this. So someone who's gone through classes at Loyola, I can say that pretty much every class that students will take are going to be taught through that same lens of how can you help people. But service is integrated into everything that we do from classes to student organizations to the university community to the Chicago community at large and how we interact with Chicago. Service comes into play with all of that. We have alternative break immersions. That's kind of mission trips without the mission. We have service learning classes. All these are opportunities for students to dive deeper into the realm of service. And I'll say that's something that loyal students will not be able to get away from is that focus on service. And that's coming from our Jesuit tradition. Next, we can talk about our community. At Loyola, our undergraduate population is about 12,000 students. That makes us a medium-sized school. So with that, I like to say that we have the community of a small school, some of the resources of a larger school, resources including having people from all over the country, all over the world. And with, excuse me, with that, about 40% of our students identify as students of color. For those students, we have different resources like our cultural organizations or like our Student Diversity and Multicultural Affairs Office, SDMA is what we call it, is an office that I was involved in, as I said earlier. And what they're really looking to do is to foster students' voices and experiences as they go through their Loyola journey, as they go through life and help get them the resources they need to be as successful as possible. SDMA also has an educational component really looking to teach our university community about the different identities that exist at Loyola. Another piece of diversity for us is going to be religious diversity. About 60% of our students identify as Catholic. It makes sense that a majority of our students are Catholic because we're a Catholic school. So for those students, we have a lot of resources like our chapel on campus where they have mass every day but Saturday, twice a day, three times on Sunday. We have Jesuit priests on campus who are a wealth of knowledge. We have our campus ministry office with Catholic chaplain looking to help students dive deeper into their faith. We have student organizations focused on the Catholic faith. All these resources exist for students to go down the path as best for them. Uh, but speaking on that, about 40% of our students don't identify as Catholic. So being a Catholic school, that number seems kind of high, and that's because we want to be a home for all faiths. We want to make sure that students can go down the journey that is best for them. So our goal at Loyola is to give people the resources they need to do their own thing. So that includes religion. We wanna make sure that students can be as successful as possible. So as far as worship spaces, we have worship spaces in our student center that are non-Catholic. We have non-Catholic chaplain in our campus ministry office. We have non-Catholic student organizations all really existing to make sure that students can make their experience their own. Talking about campuses, the Lakeshore campus is always where we have to start. This is where Loyola students journey will start. Our Lakeshore campus is located in the neighborhood called Rogers Park on the north side of Chicago. We're quite literally right off the lake. It's beautiful. Uh, but the heart of downtown is about a 20 minute shuttle ride away. And on our Lakeshore campus, we house our College of Arts and Sciences, our Neha School of Nursing, our Institute of Environmental Sustainability, and our Parkinson School of Health Science and Public Health. These are the colleges whose offices are housed at the Lakeshore campus. But again, every student's journey will start at the Lakeshore campus. We actually require our students to live on campus the first two years, and all freshman residence hall options are at the Lakeshore campus. So this is quite literally where students will start their journey. 
But the Lakeshore Campus also has our Division One athletics. We have our different core requirements on the Lakeshore Campus. 22 of 23 residence halls total are up here. The Lakeshore Campus is going to be the center of life as well as students. And one thing that I would recommend since we're moving to a virtual setting, we also offer a virtual tour. So I recommend you all go online, find our virtual tour, and walk around campus that way and kind of see some of the different options for the Lakeshore Campus there. I will say Lakeshore Campus is our take on the traditional college experience. So it's living, learning, and hanging out all in the same space, but you get all that without losing the professional opportunities that exist in the third largest city in the country. And that's more so where our Water Tower Campus comes in. The Water Tower Campus is located in downtown Chicago. It's about two blocks from Michigan Avenue or the Magnificent Mile. And this is where our School of Business, Education, Communication, and Social Work offices are located. If you're thinking about studying business and communications, you will have classes downtown. We keep our business and communications classes downtown because that's where business communications are in Chicago. So it really allows students to connect a little bit easier with professional opportunities or potentially internships. Speaking on internships, for us, that's not just a summer thing. Internships exist year round. And that's because they're down the street. And we also offer classes that will come as credit for having an internship. So there's a lot of opportunities that way. But the Water Tower campus is still a full service campus. We still have residence hall down there. We still have a gym, a library, a student center. All these things exist as resources for our students. Um, and this is existing with the Lakeshore campus. Students will have options on both campuses. As far as getting back and forth between the two campuses, we have our shuttle. It's pictured here. The shuttle runs class days, Monday through Friday, seven in the morning until midnight. Picks up every 15 minutes and takes 20, 25 minutes to get downtown, depending on traffic. That's one way to get from campus to campus. The other option is by using the CTA. Uh, so the Chicago Transit Association is what that is. We give all of our students, all of our full-time students, something called a U-Pass or a Ventra. It's a car that allows our students to ride the trains and buses in Chicago at no extra cost. So you scan, hop on, and go wherever you need to go. So getting from campus to campus, we have uh, CTA stops on the train next to both of our campuses. There's the Loyola Red Line stop next to our, water, our Lakeshore campus, excuse me, and the Chicago stop next to our Water Tower campus downtown. So the UPass can connect from campus to campus, but it also should connect students to everything that Chicago has to offer overall. That includes having about 3 million people, Fortune 500 companies, global trade investment organizations, all those professional structural things. But even more on the fun side, Chicago has 77 diverse neighborhoods, and that's really important when it comes to food. Um, you can dine around the world living in one city. The UPass will get you there. And we also have a class called Unit 101, which I'll talk about a little bit later, that gets students active in the community to see some of these different neighborhoods. As far as the sports teams, there are eight major sports teams in Chicago. And as a student, I actually went to a Bulls game and a White Sox game through Loyola for free. There's a lot of outings organized that way. If not, we also offer a lot of times discounted tickets in our student center to buy to some of these games. That can be a Bulls game for $15 or so. And then we have seven world famous museums existing in the city. Our students actually have free access to the Art Institute of Chicago. They show their ID, they can go in and walk around the museum for free. I've been multiple times and I have still yet to see every corner of that building. So the Art Institute is another really, really great resource just for being in Chicago. One thing I should say is that Loyola will be a very different experience uh, if we were located in a different city. So along with resources on campus, we want to make sure our students have access to all the opportunities that exist being in Chicago. We give our students the resources to explore Chicago, but we also want our students to explore the world, and that's where study abroad comes in. So if you're unfamiliar with what study abroad is, it's an opportunity to live in a different country, hang out, and take classes for a few months. That's essentially what study abroad is. So for us, we actually have Two international centers underneath Loyola's umbrella. There's the John Felice Rome Center in Rome, Italy. And we have a center in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. These are Loyola's campuses. And just like we have our two campuses abroad, other universities have their campuses. So we are a part of a partnership that gives us access to over 150 different programs in 70 different countries where students can theoretically go wherever they'd like to go. Study abroad for us, we really wanna make it as flexible as possible. Students can study abroad their sophomore, junior, senior year. It can be fall semester, spring semester, over the summer, during winter break, all year long. We have study abroad programs. It's a lot of options there. And as far as classes go, the classes are still taught in English. You have to learn a new language to go study abroad. And we have a study abroad office really looking to make sure that students 
can still graduate in time and go along with their four-year plan and have all the resources they need to be as successful as possible. As far as money goes, the financial aid credits, the scholarships you get to go to Loyola in Chicago will travel with you to our international centers abroad so that money follows you. And all this adds up to say that there's a reason one in three students at Loyola will study abroad. I think every student should look into this opportunity and should have some sort of abroad experience. And here at Loyola, we wanna make sure that is as easy as possible for you. So definitely check in with our study abroad office to see some of the different opportunities available for you in the future. Changing gears a little bit, we can talk about your transition to college and to Loyola. So for many of you, you're gonna be going to a new city. Chicago's a new scary place. For all of you, Loyola is gonna be a new experience. So we wanna make sure that students can be as safe as, and as comfortable as possible to be successful in this transition. So the first big transition piece for most of our students is gonna be our freshman orientation. Our first year orientation happens traditionally over the summer. And it's a two day, one night event where students will stay in the residence hall overnight and kind of have a pre-Loyola experience. Most of orientation is meeting new people. Uh, but one thing that you'll do at orientation is you'll meet your academic advisor and with them you're going to register for your first semester classes at Loyola. Your academic advisor is going to be that same advisor that's going to be with you your first two years and they're also going to teach a class called Unif 101 and University 101 which for us is essentially an orientation class helping our students understand the different resources available to them on campus and off campus. So some on-campus resources we have, uh, our tutoring center, our writing center, where students can receive free you know, academic support. We have a wellness center for physical and mental health needs. Off-campus resources, like riding the CTA, riding the trains, understanding how that works, exploring Chicago. Um, all these things are a part of our UNIF class, and they're really big on making sure your transition is safe and comfortable. So with the study abroad slide, I mentioned a four-year plan. In your UNIF class, students will develop what is called a four-year plan or essentially a living document that'll help them schedule their next four years of classes at Loyola to make registration a little bit easier as they go down the line. So that's something that's built into that transition as well. And another big part of transition is gonna be something called learning communities. Learning communities for us are located in the residence halls and they're groups where students can come together, live with, share the space, and do different activities on campus and off campus with other people who have a similar interest. So learning communities are regardless of major. Some examples can be STEM, leadership, multicultural, green sustainability, and students can opt into this again regardless of major. So I can have a business student who has a care for environmental science and will live in the green learning community because they have a focus on sustainability. Learning communities are a great way to build community from day one and have a group of people who are like-minded to grow with that Loyola. So again, they're located in the residence halls. Talking more generally about our residence halls, we have 20 residence halls total, six of them available for our first year students to live in again. And we have a housing requirement those first two years to live on campus. We wanna make sure that our students can be as integrated into the Loyola community as possible. For my Chicago folks, you do still have the option of commuting from home. Um, so keep that in mind as well. But we encourage all our students to live on campus if they're able, so much so that 86% of our students will live on campus those first two years. And earlier when I talked about living, learning, hanging out all in the same space, this is the opportunity that living on campus will provide for you is building that community from day one, sharing the same space as the people you're taking classes with, joining the organizations with. That is the benefit of having a traditional campus like the one that we have. Early in the presentation, I mentioned our core curriculum. You may have been wondering what that is. Core curriculum is our way of getting students that will run education. So this is gonna be similar to general education classes that some of you may be having in high school, like English, history, math, science, those types of things. Our core will include that, but go even further to include things like theology, arts, ethics, philosophy. All these are a part of our core curriculum, again, to get students that well-rounded education. So with the core, there's a lot of flexibility in kind of how it navigates. So these classes you see here that you think are classes are actually knowledge areas. They're not classes, individual classes, they're subjects that students can take. So students will take classes within that respective knowledge area to fulfill that core requirement. So an example of this could be theology. 
to fulfill the theology uh, requirement for our core, students can take classes ranging from Jesus Christ to Christian marriage, intro to Islam, intro to Buddhism. As a student, I took Black World Religions. All these are classes that can sat satisfy or fulfill that core requirement. There's flexibility in the classes you take, and there's flexibility in how or when you take them. So students can take the core all in the beginning of their first two years, spread throughout our four years. There's a lot of options with that. So with all that being said, everyone's core is going to look a little bit different because students take the classes that are most interesting to them and take them when they want to take them. So this is a really, really good help for our students who are undecided, let's say. They don't really know what they want to do. The core is required that every student takes it. Uh, so for undecided folks, it's built in trial period to kind of understand I do like this or I don't like this. If you're a little, you know, you kind of know what you want to do, but a little unsure, like I was coming in as a student, the core is really good help that could potentially change your mind or sway you a different way. And if you know exactly what you want to do, the core is just good extra knowledge that can result in another major or another minor potentially. So the core is a great, great benefit and it helps really get our students that well-rounded education that I was referring to earlier. Along with our core, we have over 80 majors, over 80 minors that students can choose from. And by putting a major on your application and applying as that, you're directly admitted to that program. So all our programs are gonna be direct admit. And I'll move even further to say that it's okay to be undecided as a student. It's okay to not know what you wanna do. Most students don't know what they wanna do. So you're completely normal in that respect. Um, we want to give our students the option to change their major, change their mind, and we want to give them options throughout our different colleges for that. So starting first with our College of Arts and Sciences, this is the largest and the oldest college that we have at Loyola. It houses our interdisciplinary programs, humanities, natural and social sciences, fine and performing arts, engineering, all that's in arts and sciences, as well as undecided students. Our Niehaus School of Nursing houses the nursing major exclusively. And for our nursing students, that is a direct admit program. You apply as nursing, you're a nursing student. It's a four-year Bachelor of Science in Nursing. And through the program, students will clock clinical hours. They'll also do training for the certification exam. And they'll be ready to practice as a nurse right after graduation. For our Institute of Environmental Sustainability, we at Loyola have a great focus on the world around us, and IES is what we call it, is our avenue for that. So we offer different majors focused on sustainability, as well as a facility that we have where we have a biodiesel lab, aquaponic system, greenhouse all on campus, as well as a campus out in Woodstock, Illinois called LUREC, which is about 100 acres of land where students can do research and take summer classes. Our Parkinson School of Health Science and Public Health is our newest college. And while it's new, it is still very well formed in the sense that the majors that existed and have existed at Loyola for quite some time. So Parkinson School of Health Science and Public Health houses exercise science, healthcare administration, both have been majors at Loyola, and then public health, which is one of the graduate programs we've had for quite some time. So it is still very well formed as a college. All those four of those are going to be at a Lakeshore campus. And then moving to our Water Tower campus, starting with our Quinlan School of Business is rated the number one undergraduate business program in Chicago, so we're the best business school in Chicago. Uh, and a big part of that is gonna be the business core. So I mentioned the university core previously that every student has to take. The business core is similar, but focused on business. So even if a student wants to study finance, they'll still take classes in marketing, accounting, economics. Also, they have a good knowledge of everything that is business. So that's what they're offering for there. We also have a spe specific business career center for those students. Moving to our School of Communication, they have state-of-the-art production facilities, labs, and equipment where students can get hands-on real experience in their field. We have a 24-hour student-run radio station, WLUW. We have student-run newspaper, the Phoenix. We have a, a convergence lab, which is kind of like um, seeing a news station. You can get in front of the camera, behind the camera at our Water Tower campus, as well as equipment that students can rent out. So all these are options for students to get active on campus. It doesn't include all the options that exist in the Chicago community. And talking about our School of Education, we do things a little bit differently in the sense that if a student is in the School of Education, their first week in classes at Loyola, they'll be in, in a different school in Chicago, whether it's an elementary school, a middle school, or a high school, they'll be placed in those schools immediately to start observing, they'll move further into aiding, and then finally into student teaching. So through that program, students will clock over 1,100 hours in schools, and they'll be certified to be a teacher through that program as well. And then our School of Social Work is actually a direct entry bachelor master's program. 
So if a student is a social work major, they have the option to opt into this. And how it works, junior year, um, if students want to do that, they would say yes. Senior year, they start taking master's classes along with their undergraduate curriculum. In four years, they'll graduate with a bachelor's. Woo, I'm a loyal graduate. I have a degree. Great. Yay. Great. Um, and then they'll go back for one more year and finish with their master's requirements, getting both degrees in five years instead of six. That saves money, saves time, and makes students a little bit more job ready when it comes to that advanced program. So these are different options, are different colleges that students can choose from to see what is best for them. So after talking about some major options, let's talk about uh, career paths and some professional development options that we have at Loyola. That's going to be experiential learning and career development, our two offices really centered on students and getting out into the career world. Our career development center, they're really there to make students look good. And I say that in the sense that most students coming out of high school, I would not expect them to have a resume. To work with career development, you have to give them a resume. They'll help students go back and forth and make the necessary edits to have the best resume possible. They can do the same thing with cover letters. They have mock interviews in there. All the things to make a student look good to employers. But even beyond that, career development, they have seven career fairs a year open to the Loyola community. I recommend students walk around, you know, wear business or business casual, pass out the resumes, they can get an internship or a job on the spot. We're part of a platform called Handshake, where students can go online and apply for different job opportunities, internship opportunities directly through their website. They can search on their major as well. A lot of connectivity through career development and experiential learning is going to be tied to one of the core requirements. So if you saw on the list of core requirements, it said engaged learning, experiential learning covers that. So the three things that will fulfill the engaged learning requirement will be internships, research, and service learning. Internships, again, this is something that can be year-round for our Loyola students, and it can be classes as well an internship. But experiential learning is going to have a lot of the communication and network to help our students make the, the reach out to these employers to potentially get an internship. And one thing I'll say about experiential learning and Loyola in general, we're never going to give a student an internship because nobody's going to give them a job. Rather, we're going to look to help them get the tools to be as successful as possible. And along with that, my advice for internships is not to say I got an internship to put on my resume and say I worked at this place. The biggest benefit of an internship is to help students understand whether they do or don't want to do that thing for the rest of their life. An internship is going to be the most real experience and exposure you have to a job field. So it can help you see if that's the best fit for you. So personal story, again, my degree is in political science. I was on the pre-law track. Initially, I wanted to go to law school, and that was until I interned to law firm, and I was like, never mind, it's not for me. Uh, but internships can help you understand what your best route is. So I recommend students get as many internships as possible in as many different fields as they can to help try to find their best fit. Talking about research is something that we really want to encourage here at Loyola. It makes you as a student look good, look good. it makes us as a university look good. Um, but we have a program called LURAP. It's Loyola Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program where essentially the program is saying you want to do research let us help you do that so you can carry out research on your own with a friend with a graduate student with a professor there's funded opportunities through LURAP and opportunities to be published as a student so you can be 19 20 years old in somebody's research journal as a student so that's a pretty big deal service learning is one of those things that's a little bit more specific to Loyola and this is going to be service in a class so from the service learning website, their tagline is connecting classroom content to community action, essentially saying you learn in class and you do outside of class. So an experiential learning class that I took as a student was called uh, environmental sustainability. In the class, we learned different sustainability measures and practices, and then we did them outside of class. So my group went to the south side. We worked with a community garden that was uh, pushing for urban agriculture, fighting against food deserts and gardening was our class. So it's getting students out and into, into the world to experience the different pieces of the Chicago community, the world community. So with experiential learning and the engaged learning requirement, I can say that as a Loyola student, you will get out of the classroom. There is no question about that. You will have to graduate. So you wanna make sure that world experiences are a part of students' experiences as they go through Loyola. And these two offices are definitely centered around that. So as far as professional development, there's a stat that we like to talk about at Loyola, and that's that 98% of our students are either 
employed or in graduate school three months after graduation. So these two offices definitely have a big hand in that. Along with these two offices, I definitely have to give a lot of credit to this postgraduate preparedness to our faculty. Our faculty really do a good job to make sure that there is a community in the classroom. And that's something that you can really expect at Loyola is to have a spirit of cooperation with your classmates and to have a relationship with your professor. So our students adopt the ratio is 14 to one. That's smaller than many high schools, honestly. And that's saying our professors have the ability to know students individually. They can know your name, know your face, know your story if you choose to tell them. And they can help you along your journey. They are a resource for you and you should use them as a resource. Our professors are required to have something called office hours, which are basically set times throughout the week where they're sitting in their office ready to have conversations with students about whatever the student wants to talk about. So it's built in opportunity to talk with them. And again, they're a really, really important resource. So moving to the classroom, our average class size is gonna be 26 students in a class. That's gonna be the same as the US national average for high school class sizes. So it's gonna mirror what you're experiencing right now potentially. But again, there's a spirit of cooperation in the classroom and you should lean on your classmates for any help or support, whether it's getting extra notes or studying for group projects, you all are in that together and you all can succeed together. Another benefit to us being in Chicago uh, is gonna come from our professors too, actually. So aside from just teaching, many of them are either working or carrying out research in their fields. So for our students who can easily reach them and can build a relationship with them and our faculty who are active in their fields, that provides a really easy channel and network for our students to also be active in their fields and use their professors for that network for that. So whether it's internships or job opportunities post-graduation, our professors are a really, really big help in that. And again, you all should talk with them and use them for the resource that they are. Lastly, we're gonna talk about student life and some of the experiences you can have. So I mean, college is very focused on getting you set up for the next step in your life, but it also should, should be fun. And this is where student life really comes into play. So, you know, one of the big things is gonna be division one athletics. We have men's women's basketball, volleyball, soccer, track and cross country, golf and softball, all at the D1 level. Our men's basketball team made a bunch of noise a few years ago with that final four run. You know, if you didn't know, only four teams could ever make it to the final four every year. So we did that. Um, so it was a really fun experience going through that. But, you know, our other sports teams are also pretty successful. So we have our men's women's soccer team, who both made the tournament this past year. Our men's volleyball team, who's finished top 10 in national rankings for seven out of the last eight years. They won back-to-back -back national championships 2014-2015. Our uh, men's 4 by 4 team actually just won conference um, like a month or so ago. So our sports teams are pretty successful, and our students have free access to any home game we're putting on. If you show your ID, you will have free entry into the event that's available for our students. And that's the division one level. We have other levels of sports too though. So club sports is still a pretty serious commitment. You have to travel for those teams, there's practices, or coach, you'll still travel for other universities, which will play club teams rather than NCAA teams. And those sports extend to include other things like football, lacrosse, water polo, hockey, uh, rugby, tennis, all these are club opportunities for students to join into. And the last thing is gonna be intramurals. Many murals are a lot, a lot more like you know, group your friends playing other Loyola students and kind of whatever sport is offered. Um, and there's no real commitment for that. So you have options between those three different levels if you want to join athletics. And then talking about organizations, we have over 250 student organizations that students can join. Why we have so many is actually because it only takes you for friends and idea to start a club. You can go to our student activities and Greek affairs office with an idea, pitch it to them, and you can potentially get funding to carry that out for the next semester or the next year. Um, so there's a lot of options as far as organizations go. We also have Greek life on campus. Again, I mentioned I joined Cap Alpha Savitary Incorporated through Loyola. But we have about 20 organizations that are social in nature. We also have service-based specific interest organizations like business or medical clubs all these opportunities for students to get active on campus. And then as far as not even joining things, we have a lot of events on campus, comedians, speakers, concert series. In the past, we've had, past couple of years, we've had Nick Jonas, Trevor Noah, Hannibal Burris all come on campus. A lot, of, a lot of these events are gonna be free for our students. If they're not free, you can get a Nick Jonas Arena concert for $15, which is a pretty good deal if you ask anybody. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to have a lot of fun on campus. But as I mentioned earlier, Students are in Chicago. You should also get off campus and explore the city for everything that it is. 
I say the students who have the most successful experience at Loyola are the ones who put a lot of work into it. So the more work you put into it, the more you get out. And these students will also have a healthy balance of on-campus and off-campus activities. So we wanna make sure that you have support in both arenas. So that's pretty much it. I wanna thank you all for going through this presentation with me here, the contact information for a few important offices that we have at Loyola. Again, my name is Gianni Cook. If I'm your admission counselor, say hi. If I'm not, still say hi to me. I'd love to speak with all of you. And hopefully we can welcome to the Rambo family in fall of 2020.